This video is about the removal of an HBW100 marine gearbox and the installation of a new ZF12M. Uh, you can see the gearboxes here, they're slightly different sizes which necessitated a lift in the engine uh, by 10 millimeters. The work's being done on a Swanson 38 sailing vessel and I'm going to talk through a few of the processes involved in removing the old gearbox, raising the engine, uh, shifting the propeller back and then installing the new gearbox up to the completion of the job. As you can see, the gearboxes are slightly different sizes. This required us to lift the engine by 10 millimeters and move the prop shaft back by 12 millimeters. So to lift the engine, we used a car jack and some packing under the engine mounts, which I'll show you after we remove the original gearbox. Okay, gearbox ready for removal. Um, the bell housing nuts have all been loosened. That's the last one there that's going to be loosened and then the adapter plate should come straight off the bell housing. The prop shaft coupling has been removed and the prop's been pushed back so that um, there's room for the gearbox to come out. So this is really the last step of the removal. Um, and once we've got that nut out, the um, gearbox should hopefully just come away quite neatly. So here's just a couple of shots of the bell housing and the propeller shaft coupling. Uh, so you can see the bolts and the fixings that need to be removed so that you can get um, the space ready to actually remove the gearbox itself. So the gear shift table has been taken off and the gearbox is ready to come away from the bell housing. Inside of the bell housing we have got the uh, flex plate. So we'll have a look at the flex plate, just check that we haven't got any corrosion, that the springs are all in decent condition and that's looking quite good. So this is a couple of photos of the flex plate. Um, just so I could have a good look at it. I ended up actually taking it out and doing a full inspection on it as you can see in this shot uh, just to be sure that it was in good enough condition to go back in. Alright, so here she comes. Gearbox and adapter plate ready to come out. So this is the last of those bolts coming off the adapter plate and then off she comes so that's the adapter plate off the gearbox there's the old gearbox um, ready for a rebuild and then the adapter plate is ready to go onto the new gearbox the adapter plate is going to go onto there back with those same bolts and with a bit of grease and a little bit of um, gasket uh, sealer and then she'll go onto the bell housing and here they are, the old and the new um, HBW100 out, ZF12M with the adapter plate fitted and ready to go in. So now that the gearboxes are ready, it's time to lift the engine to accommodate the new gearbox. To lift the engine, um, first thing we did was we loosened all of um, the mounting nuts and bolts so that everything to do with the engine mounts is nice and loose on all four of them um, front and back side to side uh, the front engine mounts are going to be quite simple to raise we're just going to use these lifting nuts here a 30 mil and a 24 mil and we're just going to wind them up to the desired height the rear engine mounts don't have the same amount of travel and so instead of being able to use these lifting nuts, we're going to have to lift the whole engine mount and pack underneath it. To pack underneath it, I've used these um, 10 mil packing shims from Bunnings. You can see I've modified them so they can sit in against the, um, the engine mount bolts. To get those packings in behind the rear engine mounts, we used a car jack to lift the engine by 10 millimeters, just by gently placing it under the bell housing and gently lifting it up against the loosened mounts. These are the rear engine mounts. Um, so a little bit more involved 
Just having to slip in the um, the packing shims to get them in and under the mount. So here you can see these shims now fitted underneath the rear engine mounts. Um, they're exactly 10 mils. So that ought to fit the specifications. Everything's still nice and loose at this stage. We're going to tighten it all up after the gearbox is on. And the scissor jack did the job quite well. Got the 10 mils of lift that we needed. And now that they're packed up, we're just going to take a bit of pressure off that jack and let the engine sit back into its um, into its position. But all the mounts are still nice and loose so that we can get our alignment um, perfect once the gearbox is on. So we're just getting a bit of grease on the splines here, um, ready for fitting. So just finishing applying a bit of non-hardening aviation gasket um, to this adapter plate where it meets the bell housing so that we get a good seal. Okay, the new gearbox and plate have been popped down um, onto the engine bay floor and now I'm going to um, sit them into position and try to get those splines to match up into the flex plate coupling. So what I'm trying to do is get these, I'm trying to get these splines to sit into, to sit into um, here, into the flex plate. Oh, well, look at that. In she goes. Bloody little ripper. With the gearbox fitted and everything nice and loose, I'm now um, just popping in these prop shaft uh, bolts to, once again, keeping them really nice and loose, but just to get the prop shaft sitting roughly where it, um, where it should so that we can work at the alignment um, once we're... Um, ready to go on it. Beautiful. So, well, just work away at getting those bolts in and then we'll get the nuts onto them. So we're ready to reattach the gear shift cable. So the cable um, will just sit onto the gear shift lever to make it come back and forth. We've got this aluminium plate and a little holding bracket. So I've just fitted a bolt through there. I'm going to get a nut on him to tighten him up. And then this um, cable end will fit through the gear shift lever and be held in place with that split pin. We've, we've attached the um, gear shift cable and we're ready to just check how she runs from the top. So I've asked my crew to go up and just um, shift gently into um, forward and then back to neutral and into reverse. So we'll see how it goes. Right, AJ. There's forward and into neutral and there's reverse and back to neutral. Alright, well the job's now done, um, new gearbox is in and running and well installed. So this is just a list of the processes that we went through um, to remove the old one and to install the new one. So if um, you're watching because you're doing a similar process, good luck. Um, yours may be different to this, but hopefully this has given you some sort of a idea about how you could tackle your own project. So now it's time to go sailing.